to Brent Beatty's Brushstrokes, and I'm Brent Beatty. This channel is all about art. Drawing, painting with acrylics, watercolors, and ink. It has tips and tricks, as well as step-by-step -step tutorials. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified each time I create a new video. This video is number six in the series Beginner's Guide to Watercolors. In it, I will show you how to do a variegated wash and then do a painting using that technique. So we're going to do a variegated wash. And we have to mix up two, oh, a variegated wash is two or three different colors. I'm going to do three. We need a lot of paint, a lot of paint mixed up. Fairly watery. I'm using ultramarine blue with phthalo blue and permanent rose. really do need to mix up lots. Don't want to run out. And I'm using a different paintbrush for my yellow. So I'm using a uh, gamboge. There's a lump in the gamboge. Here we go. There it is. And I'm using Hansel yellow together in the middle of each. I'm going to start with the blue. So we could use this for a sky and later I will show you how to use it for a sky and do a painting. So we start out with the blue on the top. And you notice that I have my painting, my paper propped up on a piece, on a on masking tape. Gee, some times I can't speak. And this is just my practice watercolor paper. So the uh, good watercolor paper will act a little differently. So we're building up a bead, uh, and we we'll go down about a third of the way. And I don't have a bead. There we go. Oh, I'm going to do one more. This time I have a bead on part of it at least. Then, without cleaning my brush, and I accidentally cleaned it, that's why I had to do it again, go into the next color and pick it up and go into it again and pick it up. I'm going to dip my page just to keep that bead along the bottom. I'm cleaning my brush now and I'm going to get the color, pure color on here now. I'm just letting the bead go where I want it. That's what is there. And now with pure color, I'm going to pick up that bead again. Get more pure color. Down again. And, oh, I forgot to clean my brush. Don't want to clean my brush. I'm going to pick up the yellow. the yellow again and I picked up that little bit that I want. There 
there. And that's how you do it. And I'm going to show you next how to use it in a sunset. Now for this sunset, I have mixed up more colors. Add a little water here and just finish it to the bottom. But I'm going to paint something over top of this later. So we let this dry and then I'm going to paint something over top of it. I've cleaned my palette. <coughs> Excuse me. I still have my paper propped up on a piece of masking tape. That's just the way I like to paint. And I was looking at photos and I have this one of a sunset I did, uh, I took a picture of during the winter a long time ago. Don't even remember when, but I'm going to use that just as a photo reference, just so I can look at trees. And I'm going to make, I think, a gray with ultramarine. And I'll need quite a lot of paint for this. I'll make quite a big wash. and some burnt sienna. I, think I need more. Whoopsie. I may also use some raw umber. Oh look, I put my blue paintbrush in there. Really made a bad mess. I polluted my burnt sienna. Now I will go ahead and pollute my ultramarine. That gives me a very dark wash. And I want to make quite a bit of it. A little more burnt sienna. That gives pretty nice gray. And now I'm going to just tap in some trees. My paint, uh, my canvas, canvas, <laughs> my paper is really dry. I'm going to bring it down this far and uh, we can see the, the sky through the trees. And I'll speed this up for you so it's not too boring. And I am using my whole vine, number 10 round. When it dried, I thought the painting was rather light, so I went over it one more time, just the dark bits, to darken the foreground. But I still didn't like it, so I added some clouds. Next time, I won't make the colors so bright.